Hello, I'm Madeline Shaw, nutritional therapist, cook, author, and mother, and I'm here to talk to you about my first food. Now, weaning can often be quite a daunting subject with lots and lots of different opinions, but I thought I'd talk you through the basics some fantastic first foods and also how to get a positive mindset for you and your little one during weaning. Now, I started weaning at about just before six months and six months is probably the age that you hear the most. Sometimes people start a little bit earlier, sometimes people start a little bit later, but around that six month mark is when you want to start introducing your little one or little ones to food. Now, this can feel quite daunting because it's totally new and also feels like quite a lot of work, but I feel like it's all about having a good mindset that this is fun. And really the beginning of weaning is really about introduction to foods. It's not necessarily about them eating a full meal. Um, it's really about exploration. It's about building their flavor profile. So there are a few foods not to introduce at the six month mark. They're things like sugar and salt. You can introduce them once they turn one, but only in very small amounts. Um, and also honey as well. You have to leave off until they're one. Also things like whole nuts. You can introduce nut butters or ground nuts at six months, but hold off for whole nuts until they're a bit older just because they can be a choking hazard. And also things like unpasteurized cheeses and also raw meat and raw fish. Obviously you can check all of this sort of stuff on the NHS website. This is a fantastic resource to find out all these sorts of things of not introduced. But apart from that, the sky's the limit. At the very beginning, they have this flavor window where if you can expose them to as many different flavors and textures, they're gonna be much more likely to be less fussy and more open to trying new foods. So the more different types of tastes and flavors and textures you can get them to enjoy in the early days will make your life easier long-term. I'm a big fan of veg-led weaning, which means that you start with veg at the beginning. So cucumber is a fantastic one. If you cut it up into little thin strips, obviously removing the skin, and actually just the jelly bit in the middle is the best bit, especially at the very beginning before they've got lots of teeth, just to really try out for finger food. I think it's so fantastic. Of course you could blend it up and do it as a puree as well, but I think cucumber as a finger food is one of the best really melts in the mouth, especially that middle bit where all the seeds are. Um, and it's really, really easy, it's fantastic. And it's the sort of thing I always have in the fridge. Another one is avocado. I know it's technically a fruit, but I always think of it as a vegetable because it's not that sweet. I was, grew up on avocados. My family are from New Zealand and my aunt have an avocado farm and it was just part of our lives, avocados. Always has been still is today and I think as a food for a baby what a fantastic thing and the great thing is you can share it your baby can have a little bit of avocado and then you can have the rest on toast for breakfast and you can eat together so you know slicing this up you know mushing it up as puree or slicing it up into really small pieces for finger food also is a fantastic thing so I would really try out lots of varieties of different vegetables and then move on to the sweeter fruits Mango is still an absolute favorite of my son's. So delicious, so easy. Again, you can puree this or you can chop this into finger food. Um, and then, you know, the kind of root vegetables like sweet potato, great mashed or also steamed um, or, you know, roasted in the oven with some oil. Now, this is where I think it's really great to start bringing in spices. So you probably don't want to go like super spicy with food, um, like lots of chili, but all the other spices are fantastic. Why not roast some, you know, sweet potato with olive oil and cinnamon on it as little chippies? Or adding in a little bit of smoked paprika, really exposing your kids to these really lovely mild spices is going to make them enjoy the food more because they taste better, but also get them to become real life foodies. So when you've got through all the different vegetables, got through all the different fruits, of course you want to be trying out everything individually when it comes to different foods to check for allergies. 
But it's also important not to shy away from very common allergies. Something like peanuts can be a common allergy. And if it doesn't run in your family, if you don't have it, no one else in your family has it, it's really okay to try it at home. And in fact, they say that the earlier you try it, the less likely your child is to have an allergy. But of course, if you're concerned about allergies, if they run in your family, please do consult your doctor. Now, some key essential nutrients for your babies are iron and omega-3s. Now, iron is something that our baby often stores up for the first six months, but around six months, it's when its stores are depleted and it needs to get it from food. So introducing things like meat or beans or dark leafy vegetables or egg yolks are fantastic. Now you wanna cook these through, so like a boiled egg, you know, really smallly chopped up or mashed up with a spoon is a fantastic breakfast for a baby. You know, babies really need a lot of protein for their growth, they're growing so much all the time and having good quality sources of protein from eggs, from fish, from meat, from uh, legumes, from grains is such an important part of their diet. Now, omega-3s are also really important nutrient for babies. Now, you can get that in oily fish such as salmon, um, but you can also get that in flax seeds and nuts, but obviously do grind these up into a nut butter or into a flour, which you could mix through oats um, as a porridge is a really yummy thing, or spread um, the walnut butter on toast um, is a really another really delicious thing to be giving to your children, but be really conscious that you're getting lots of omega-3 into your little one's life. And if your little one does like fish, to have two portions of oily fish per week. And this is important for us parents and caretakers um, is that we're also eating omega-3 rich you know having at least two portions of omega-3 rich fish a week is really important for us as well so i really like to as much as possible eat together i think it forms really good habits it often means that your child will sit at the table for longer it often means that they're more likely to be interested in their food if they see you eating you know, our children really do what they see us do rather than what we tell them to do. So modeling behavior when it comes to eating is really important. So as much as possible, sitting at the table, eating together. I know it's not always possible because often kids eat a lot earlier or you wanna eat later with someone else. So it's not about being perfect and all these sorts of things, but it's just about doing the best that you can. And in any moment, even if you just grab a cup of tea and sit down with them while they're having their breakfast or their lunch, this will make such a huge difference. Now, weaning can be quite stressful. I know there's some really awful videos that my boyfriend took of me as I'm like spooning something into our son's mouth, making these like gurning kind of faces because I'm so nervous that he's gonna reject it. And I think that it is really nerve wracking. You know, you, you want your child to eat. It, it's kind of an instinct within us. But I think that what's so different about children is they really will vary. Some days they'll eat a lot, some days they won't eat anything. I remember having like a few weeks where my son really ate nothing and freaking out. But honestly, that is them just regulating. That's totally normal. Of course, if your child's losing a lot of weight, please do contact your doctor whole children's appetites do vary throughout the day throughout the week throughout the year so it's constantly changing and evolving and you have to let go of control I think a huge part of you know being a parent is releasing control and I think that this is just another step in releasing control so really try and enjoy it remember it's going to be incredibly messy food is going to go all over the hair all over the floor um, it's going to go absolutely everywhere um, you know they're going to make some very weird faces and just because they're making a funny face it might be just that they're experiencing sour for the first time it's not necessarily that they dislike the amazing food that you ate and sometimes you will put a lot of effort in and it will get rejected but remember they're not rejecting you they're just in that moment not keen on that but be persistent. If they reject carrots the first time and there's no you know, problems with allergies or anything, be consistent. Try it again, try it mashed, try it roasted, try it thinly sliced, you know. Just this constant repetition will make them more interested in that food. You know, it might have just been that moment. In that moment, they didn't like it or they didn't like it in the way it was. But keep trying, be persistent. Don't just think, oh, they don't like that food, I'm never gonna give it to them again. Just constantly keep trying because it will evolve their palate. It will also allow you to be more creative and use lots of different things. 
So in terms of meal times, it is good to start getting into a meal time habit. So trying to have a breakfast, a lunch, um, and a dinner. Obviously, depending on the age of your baby, it will vary, but trying to have those meal times so that they're just easier to replicate as they get older and older. Now, in terms of how much food to serve them, it's really hard to say because babies need different amounts at different times. So it's one of those kind of difficult things where I know you want me to give you the magic amount, but you've got to kind of just see how you go. So try a little bit. You can hold back some, you know, that you've got on the hob and give it to them if they need some more, or you can freeze that for later. So I think it's about being a bit flexible, having a bit of a backup um, in the fridge and the freezer if you need to add more food onto their plate, um, but also just being flexible with the amounts that they're gonna need in that moment on that day. Now, there are lots of different approaches to weaning. You know, the kind of most common ones are purees and then baby led or a bit of both. Um, now, I did a bit of both, um, a bit of purees, a bit of finger food. Sometimes I did solely baby led for a few months and then sometimes I brought back in other things. I think it's like really about trial and error. You know, there's lots of really interesting information about baby led weaning that I found fascinating, especially about getting there chewing and that really developing their jaw which i find fascinating and their airways too um but also purees can be incredibly convenient especially when you're out you know at a cafe you can just bring it along in a pot and you know it's a lot less messy so i feel like experiment read into it research you know there's so much amazing information out there and i think figure out what's right for you i don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it i think as long as we're getting a variety of nutrients and a happy fed baby, then that's all that we want, you know? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoy the rest of this virtual meetup. It's a total honor to be here with you. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this, then there are loads more exclusive videos from the Happy Mum, Happy Baby virtual meetup for you to enjoy and watch. Just head to happymumhappybaby.com to find out more.